When the 2007 annual conference passed a statement urging the church to deliberately and intentionally move toward becoming much more intercultural, it may have been a new idea for some parts of the church, but it's an effort that was already well underway among the brethren of the Verlina district. A district with as successful a church planting program as any, several of the current new church projects do exactly what the annual conference is calling for planting churches among our ethnic communities. We see our church plants in the Hispanic community and indeed the entire multicultural emphasis as a way of welcoming newcomers to our communities and saying here is a place for you to be a part of the community. The district supported new church plant meeting at the Roanoke First Church is typical of the kind of faithful response the brethren of the Berlina district have had to the Great Commission. We've got to to make up our minds that when God says to go and tell the story, we need to go and tell the story and allow people to tell their stories to us and to share the gospel. That's what it's all about. Some years ago, the brethren from Verlina decided to share Christ with people in the Charlotte area, and now a strong living faith church of the brethren is making a witness in the community of Concord. The same with Smith Mountain Lake in Virginia, where a church plant in the 1990s is now a thriving congregation. Another area which was without a brethren presence was the Raleigh-Durham area, where now the Peace Covenant Fellowship continues to make steady progress with district support as it establishes itself as a new church in that community. The notion of sharing the brethren understanding of faith in a new area is at the heart of the district's church development efforts, and among the places that's happening is Floyd County. We are blessed in Floyd County with uh, a lot of Hispanics and um, they just didn't have places that they felt comfortable of worshiping. And so that was one of my visions and, and dreams uh, to, um, to help in some way. The project is called Renaissance, a term for being reborn or revived. And some of the group meets at the former Greasy Creek Church building near Floyd. Others at meeting points set up near Christiansburg in Mount Airy, North Carolina. Renaissance Floyd is pastored by Raul and Lydia Gonzalez. La visión que tenemos para la iglesia en Floyd. The vision we have in the, in Floyd is to plant in different churches. So we 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 can see a lot of opportunity and open door to plant in different churches because our vision is continue to plant and then training leader and send them to uh, fill the pulpit or the church we plant. So we also want to plant another church in Christianburg, which when we have a little group too already. We have seen that uh, God's hand in this and that doors were open. One of the biggest boosts to this effort is the support the congregations in the district are offering, starting with prayer support, but also with visits and financial contributions. One of the assets that we have as a denomination is that we believe very strongly that who we are with others says a lot about who we are with God. And this uh, provides a linkage between the already strong faith that Hispanics have and the vertical, that is one's relationship with God, uh, along with then the idea of the community and being part of one another. That same principle is guiding another church planning effort in the Hispanic community, this one in the neighborhood of the Roanoke First Church, called Renaissance Roanoke, and is pastored by Daniel D'Olio. We are a very Christ-centered congregation. Uh, we preach the, the gospel in a sincere and simple way, and a practical way. He's working at this point of, of emphasizing discipleship, which is living your life day by day by day in Jesus Christ. And uh, it's not just something that you come to on Sunday, but it's something that you take with you and that is always a part of your life. And I appreciate that. Some of the things that we've been doing basically is the old traditional way of evangelizing, um, knocking doors, being friends with people. Uh, we don't wait for people to come to church, even though we do invite them to come. But basically our first approach is to be friends with them, visit them where they are, whether they are in the stores, whether they, I meet them in Walmart, Kmart, any of the you know, huge stores, and also going to the apartment complex where they live, knocking doors and leaving flyers, evangelistic flyers about what the, the gospel of Jesus Christ is all about. Daniel Diolio has been really energetic in meeting the public, 
Uh, when he has uh, new leads for new people, he's there. Naming both projects Renaissance is an attempt to have consistency among the Hispanic church plants, not only in the Berlin district, but across the denomination. It's a way of giving identity to the Hispanic new church developments within the Church of the Brethren. And it's something that uh, really crosses district lines. The Renaissance is giving the opportunity to have leaders be trained and also the opportunity to plant the new churches in uh, the same model. So what we're trying to do basically is create a network, network of churches that work the same way, with the same idea, the same value, the same system, and at the same time the same uh, ethical um, approaches of, of how to do evangelism and how to uh, develop more leaders. The project is exciting because it helps to bring the Hispanic community and our community together as one so that they're not so much the other people. It puts them together with us in a congregation setting to where we can eventually do some things together and bring them more into a, a one big community. Not all the efforts at church extension in Berlina District are within ethnic communities. Members of the Lakeside Fellowship have started meeting regularly on Sunday evenings for worship at their new building. Progress has been slower than the core group had hoped for, but the project has received steady district support. Many people from the supporting congregations attended the chartering service in 2008 when the group was meeting at a nearby Catholic church building. Now having their own building is a plus in the effort to attract new people. It gives us a place to, um, when we publicize an event or actually have an event, we're not using someone else's facilities and trying to go by their rules or whatever and people don't get confused whether it's you know another church's event as opposed to our event so when we publicize Lakeside's having you know Easter egg hunt or a meal or something they know where to come and who's sponsoring it so that's been um, encouraging. As this project progresses with the prayer support, the presence and financial gifts of members of neighboring congregations, God's kingdom is extended and people find new life in Jesus Christ. Through the whole process we have definitely learned patience uh, that it is in God's time and not our timing. And God has someone out there already set aside that will be our pastor. The timeline is longer than we, we think. We think we should explode and things should happen real quickly, but we're learning that God has a timeline that's not ours. <laughs> Whatever the timeline, these projects, as those which came before them, are the products of brethren seeking to be faithful to the calling from God. In the scripture, we read from beginning to end about the importance of hospitality, how we treat persons, and the Bible repeatedly teaches us to welcome the sojourner or the stranger in our midst. One of the things that we desire from our congregations is uh, prayer. We believe that it's important to pray for each of our new church developments. Prayer is something that all of us can do together. It costs nothing, it reaps great benefit not only for the person who's praying or the church, but for the overall kingdom and work of God.